launch weekend special code espresso gets you 30% off your entire order at gfuel.com. If you're interested, check it out. Welcome to the first of many Modern Warfare videos here on the channel for the coming year. And depending on where you're at in the world, you're either just anxiously anticipating the launch of the game or perhaps maybe loading in for the first time now. Whichever the case may be, I wanted to share with you guys the first of many guides here going up on the channel over the course of the next few weeks as we kick off the Modern Warfare content coming in droves. Today, let's start off with the best ways that you can rank up your progression this year in Modern Warfare. This goes for your enlisted ranks levels 1 through 55 initially, then all the way up through your officer ranks once you reach those seasonal extras after the initial 55 levels of play. Hopefully this can prove insightful and help you as you jump into your own personal grind coming up very shortly. If you're new to the channel though, and perhaps part of the 67% of users that aren't subscribed, be sure to do so for daily Modern Warfare content, and especially now at launch when we have plenty more going up. But anyways, let's jump right into the best ways to rank up. First, a little preface, there's a few new systems in place for how you can rank up this year, in addition to, of course, the entirely new ranking system of simply 1 through 55, one time, no prestiging, then jumping into the additional officer ranks. We're going to section this off into the things that you can take advantage of that are new, plus the standard best ways to rank up via things like your in-game gameplay that are best to know about but are there every single year. We'll talk about the best approaches and what you can take and such. Firstly, one feature that is returning that we can start off all of this with and is a very simple one is that of daily challenges. These in particular aren't necessarily new, but they make a return and are there from the very start, something that not every Call of Duty game as of recently could say. When you consider the daily challenges in Modern Warfare, there are from what we experienced at a pre-release capture event in Los Angeles last week courtesy of Activision, three challenges per day that were relatively simple and easy to approach. Naturally, you don't have to do these, but if you're looking to soak up as much XP as possible, it's an easy little bonus for not doing much outside of the ordinary. Some of these daily challenges every so often will have some loot associated with it as well, such as a smaller item like a calling card or an emblem, but every single daily challenge that we had access to over the days we were out there had XP associated with it. Following suit in terms of challenges that you should take advantage of is the brand new mission challenge system in place in Modern Warfare this year. When Infinity Ward talked about grinding the game and the direct paths to content, that they were looking to bring into the game pre-launch, naturally many were skeptical given the recent history of Call of Duty, but as of launch, as of no interference later on in this year just yet, this holds true and is definitely something that is grindy for those players that are looking for a lot to do, and also, this conveniently helps you out with your rank progression greatly. Mission challenges are a new seasonal system that will offer more challenges with every seasonal update, but the nice part is that none of these challenges in place in the current, if you want to call it pre-season, or seasons to follow in the future, will ever be replaced. Instead, challenges of mission challenges will simply be added to. So even say 10 months down the line, if you didn't get some of these ones at launch, you could still do them even then. With these missions, you can complete them all. So technically you could run out of bonuses that you could end up getting with each of these, but those won't be for a while. Because as of launch and what we had access to last week at our capture event, there were 13 missions right out of the gate, making for a total of between all missions, 97 challenges for the player to complete, and every single one of them offers XP reward bonuses for completion. Most have other things associated with it, a lot of them being calling cards, emblems, but at the end, there's a cosmetic weapon variant blueprint that comes along at the end of every single mission challenge. But while you may not get a weapon blueprint every single challenge of that, you will get for every single challenge some XP yield for completion. Now the way this works as a brief overview of missions in total is that you have to complete one challenge of a mission in order to go on to the next challenge. It's a multi-step challenge series to reach that designated blueprint unlock, so you can't necessarily pick and choose out of that sequence, but you'll have plenty of time and plenty of challenges to work on to get these XP bonuses up. I definitely recommend these not only because of the ample amount of XP gains that you can get while you're trying to rank up through your enlisted or your officer ranks, but also for the fact that you end up getting some cool loot out of it at the end of each mission. Let's talk about some of the other challenges though. Weaponry is the lifeblood of this game. Infinity Ward set off on a journey to make the weapons of Modern Warfare the main characters. Their overhaul of customization in terms of what you'll see in the gunsmith, the amount of camos, the charms, the stickers and all, they wanted to give these weapons life. Turns out that the life of each weapon is a hell of a grind, and that's a good thing if you're looking for XP gain from progressing them. Camo challenges are an absolutely huge part of Modern Warfare's weaponry and award XP with each camo unlocked. Now, while we have 100 plus camos per weapon in the game, Game, we don't necessarily have that many challenges because of the base camo unlocks for each camo category that you'll unlock. 
depending on when the video goes live, we'll have a video detailing the new camo system in its entirety, either up already or going up very soon. So keep an eye out here on the channel if you want to learn about it all in depth. But simply know that the camo challenges, there's about 90 of them per weapon, which will give you incremental XP bonuses upon completion. It's something that you'll get for simply working towards ranking up your weapon and going for that max camo in game. It's a hell of a grind, but for simply playing, you'll be rewarded. There's plenty of challenges for the camos that you might not even notice you're even going towards. The base category ends up dealing with just simply regular old kills with that weapon to unlock camos. Then you'll of course have your things like your headshots and others, which you may just start to earn XP without even realizing that you're progressing through camo ranks. Talking weaponry a little bit further and the life of them, Gunsmith and the depth of weapons introduces a much larger weapon grind in terms of weapon leveling. Depending on the weapon class you can have upwards of 70 and 80 levels per weapon, rifles having the most weapon levels, pistols having the least to my knowledge preliminarily, and you rank these up by simply playing with them, and of course, as you rank them up, you will earn additional XP that can help you rank up faster. So, while later on in the year you may max out a weapon and not get as much in terms of a special reward of XP out of it since you're not progressing it, now is as better a time as any to make sure that you grind out some weapons to take advantage of that extra XP that may be lying around. Let's talk about in-game though. What sort of things should you be doing whenever you jump into the game? Because naturally, we of course can work towards headshot challenges, we can work on different weapons, we should use different weapons, but what about things like game modes? What about things that we may not necessarily think of also on top of that? Well, for game modes, there's a bunch that I would recommend here this year, a lot of which being objective oriented. The one though that I am probably going to gravitate towards mostly is that of ground war. 32v32, or in some cases 20v20, it seems like they're throwing around the terminology of ground war almost at random at once they were saying ground war wasn't Aenea Palace with 20v20 then they ended up saying that that was the case so it's something that just those larger player count game modes of course that's where I'm probably going to be but this will let you encounter more enemies thus allowing you to get more kills in theory and also allowing you to get higher scores higher streaks higher metal rewards higher potential for everything so that to me was fantastic because if you're playing the objective if you're playing something that you can end up getting higher scores that will translate to more XP once the game ends up completing. And of course, I just love the chaos of it all. I love the fact that any which way I could turn, there could be a gunfight waiting for me. Granted, it can get kind of annoying if somebody's pre-aiming a corner that you just spawned on, but you get the picture. The chaos of it all, the in theory more potential to get a higher score, but in a relatively same time frame compared to a standard 6v6 TDM, that of course is very appealing to me. And not gonna lie, the maps that we've played here in Ground War are pretty awesome. The fact that Tavorsk District is a map with two massive skyscrapers and a ton of cityscape around it, that in Call of Duty to me is absolutely mind-blowing. But anyways, maybe you're not a huge fan of Ground War. Maybe you don't like that upped player count. I would definitely suggest a couple of different game modes, but probably my top three would be Domination, Cyber Attack, and Headquarters. Now, all of these are 6v6 potential. I'm pretty sure that Headquarters can go up to 10v10, maybe a little further. I don't know that we've seen it in 20v20, so that in particular is just being subject to me basing this video off of pre-release footage. But things like Domination allow you to get captures and score there. You can end up getting more score per captures or defends with kills on the objectives. And the overall pace of the game is something that you can have that tug of war back and forth which you can capture, defend, and in a relatively stable capacity. Plus, of course, the games don't last all that long. It's around 10 to 12 minutes per game, maybe a little shorter if you end up blowing the other team out of the water. Cyber Attack is absolutely fantastic because you end up getting that up score for each kill, Plus, you can get a ton of XP for simply reviving your teammates. That's a new little twist here that makes it different than that of just regular old search and destroy. You get a decent amount of XP for planting the EMP. So that's something that, of course, you want to take advantage of just because of the score potential there. And headquarters, again, kind of a little bit of combination between all this kind of stuff. You can play the objective, get objective kills, defends, all that. But in some cases, a couple of more players to end up throwing on the enemy team, which will, in theory, increase the number of those engagements you can take part in. From a simple conscientious standpoint as well talking about game modes in the matches you're playing another thing to consider is just to simply stay in the match up until completion i know that i am definitely guilty of this in some capacity where it'll be pretty close to the end of a match but i know that we're gonna lose and so therefore i'm kind of just like 
well, may as well not stay and just jump on into the next one as soon as possible. But if that's the case, then I sacrifice a match bonus. So if you end up staying in that game, you'll end up, even if just a little bit, getting some extra XP to store away towards your ranks. Now, while you may be able to consciously think about staying in a game, one thing you may not always consciously think about is that of the medals you end up earning. Medals in Call of Duty have always awarded you a little bit of extra XP, some of course offering more than others. Things such as your Juggernaut medal, which is attaining that that 30 kill streak or that nuke, that's something that will award you, of course, more XP than a single double kill medal or a bloodthirsty medal or something like that. Of course, there's varying levels of that, but things in Call of Duty like hardcore modes are always fantastic for this because you end up gaining so many one shot, one kill medals or so many double kill medals or anything like that. So the biggest thing is that I can say go for as many medals as possible. If you know that you're going to be sniping, well, try and get as many one shots as possible. If you're playing ground war, try and get as many multi kills as possible. Try and capture as many flags as possible. Things like that will just start to add up and of course give you a ton more XP for simply playing the game in a more active capacity. The more active you are with the game, the more you end up chaining these things together, the more XP you end up getting. And that's another thing that's pretty cool as well. You can visibly see in this game a lot of that chaining together effect. You've probably seen through some gameplay upon pre-release that anytime there were things like maybe a double or a triple kill pop-up that a player got and it goes plus 700, which could be anything like chaining together double kills or or an objective kill, stuff like that, plus the kills you ended up getting. So you'll end up seeing more score even showcased on screen when you do these kind of things. The final thing in terms of features or gameplay wise that we can talk about here is that of the officer rank challenges. Now these won't be available to you until you've reached level 55 and then after when you jump into officer rank number one and you go into those 100 preseason in this case perhaps or seasonal ranks you'll end up getting throughout the year. Once you get through enlisted of course you're on to all of these but you cannot touch these until then. These admittedly no one got to out of our pre-release capture session so your guess right now could be as good as mine as to what they will be but having sat down with some of the developers talking about these you will get of course challenges that go along with each challenge and of course ribbons for each challenge completed emblems for every 10 challenges completed and then an animated mastery emblem for all 100 challenges if you do complete all of those so of course you'll presumably get xp along the way with all of that and then with each mastery emblem you end up getting in that final 100 completionist one you'll likely get even more on top of that so all of these things can help you compound your xp yield rates and what you can do to increase that speed at which you go from level one at the very beginning all the way up to 55 and then through your officer ranks up to officer rank 100 with each individual season. This stuff can be applied either right now or 10 months down the line, but maybe not with as many challenges open and easily accessible like you would for simply just playing the game for the first time. One small tip that is possibly the product of having a lot of friends not on the same schedule as myself when I play is that solo play also does help me because I'm not being challenged by my teammates that I know are going to do tremendously well. It offers up a little bit more information and a little bit more engagements that I can take instead of, say, having to fight for a window overlooking where players are funneling in from with another member in my party, so on and so forth. That stuff can help but overall that is my tips here for how to rank up the fastest and the most efficiently within modern warfare so let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below that's where we're gonna wrap it up is there anything in particular that you would add to this list maybe take away from it whatever it may be love to get your thoughts and feedback but hopefully this proved insightful hopefully it helped you out in some way shape or form and if it did make sure you drop a like down below if you are new to the channel like we said be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things modern warfare a ton of tutorials and guides are going up on the channel plus of course a year of content here throughout all of it. So if you're interested, hit that subscribe button. If you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get kind of events on YouTube. Practice live on both those. If you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. Well, it's out of the way. Thank you guys all so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care. I'll see you guys in some later videos for Modern Warfare and peace.